guys, I'm Cody. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. This is long overdue. Let's talk my favourite books of 2018. It's time. I read a lot of books in 2018. I read like a good 180 so books. I also gave over 30 books 5 stars. So whittling this down was super difficult. I did try and whittle it down to a top 10, but that was too hard so we have a top 13 and also at the end of this video I'm just going to hold up a bunch more books that I also highly recommend if you have any questions about those you can ask me in the comments. So let's start, I haven't put them in any particular order, I love them all the same, let's start with the first one. You all knew this one would make an appearance right? It's Nevermore, The Child of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is a middle grade fantasy story about Morrigan who is a cursed child destined to die on her 11th birthday, only for when on the eve of that birthday she is whisked away by a whimsical, charismatic gentleman named Jupiter. He takes her away to Nevermore, a magical land where she's going to have to compete to win a spot in a magical society and do some trials. It's a hell of a lot of fun guys. This gets compared to Harry Potter a lot and I can totally see why. It's very British, very whimsical, very charming. It definitely has nods to Harry Potter Potter, but it's definitely its own thing. It's very twisted and a little bit darker and creepier and it just makes me smile so much. It's so full of charm and whimsy and this is just an amazing series. I also gave Wondersmith, like I said, a five star as well and I just can't recommend this series enough. If you just want a cracker of a story that's just gonna sweep you into this magical world and have you giggling throughout it, I highly recommend Nevermore. I cannot wait for the next in the series now, so this had to make the list. Next we have a book that completely surprised me and blew me away, and that is All My Friends Are Superheroes by Andrew Kaufman. In this story we're following a character named Tom who's a regular old bloke in a world where all his friends, like the title suggests, are superheroes, including his wife, who is called The Perfectionist. However, Tom and The Perfectionist's wedding is ruined when her ex-boyfriend, Hypno, hypnotises her into not being able to see Tom anymore. She can't hear him, she thinks he's invisible. Six months on, The Perfectionist still can't see Tom and she believes that he has just abandoned her, so she's about to board a flight to Vancouver to start over again. And this book basically revolves around Tom joining joining her on that flight, sitting next to her where she can't see him, and relentlessly trying to get her to see him again. So at its core this book is a love story between Tom and the perfectionist, but the genius thing about this story is just how comical all these superheroes are with their superpowers that aren't necessarily superpowers you'd necessarily want. Each superhero in this story has a name that defines what they can do, however some of these characters have the worst superpowers ever. For example, Falling Girl, The Stress Bunny, The Couch Surfer, to name a few. Every so often in this book you're given a couple of pages just with some superheroes and the powers that they have. Some of them are legit superpowers, but others not so much. For example, the Stress Bunny. Blessed with the ability to absorb the stress of everyone in a 50 foot radius, the Stress Bunny is invited to every party, every outgoing. Her power originates from her strict Catholic upbringing. And the Couch Surfer, empowered with the ability to sustain life and limb without a job, steady companion or permanent place of residence, the Couch Surfer can be found roaming from couch to couch of friends' apartments all across the city. This is genius guys, it is so funny, it is, like I said, we're about Nevermore, straight up whimsy and charm, and this is another book that I just could not stop smiling at. This floored me, it's so small, but it's got a very dark sense of humour, and if you're anything like me, I think you'll love it too. This is definitely underrated, underrated on booktube, I don't feel like I've heard a lot of people talk about it, that needs to change. I highly recommend you go read All My Friends Are Superheroes. A book that needs no introduction, if you've managed to escape this hype, I don't know where you've been, but of course The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid had to make this list, didn't it? This is the story of film star Evelyn Hugo, who was an old school Hollywood siren and a very controversial figure due to the amount of marriages and divorces that she's had. She is quite private, however she picks someone out of obscurity to come and interview her and write a book about her life. This is split up into each section for each different husband and this was not what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did, but I feel like this is unanimously loved here on booktube, right? This deserves all the praise and more. What I particularly loved about it was just how real and tangible Evelyn Hugo felt as a character. I finished this book and I was actually bummed that I couldn't go and just look her up and watch her movies. She felt so real. 
and it was just so well done. I definitely want to check out more Taylor Jenkins Reads books in the future. So if you have any recommendations for me, do let me know. I'm not quite sure where to start. I will say I also really, really enjoyed the diversity in here and the representation. This has great rep for the LGBTQIA plus community and it was just so heartwarming. Also the ending, it dealt with some very tricky subject matter, but it was handled so well. Beautifully written, I couldn't put it down. If you haven't read this yet, where have you been? This is great. <laughs> Next, a book that I read quite recently and fell hard for, and that's Exit West by Musan Hamid. This is a story about two characters named Nadia and Syed, who live in a war-torn country where assassinations and killings are happening around them all the time. They're very much in danger, but they're given the opportunity to fled their country and this violent lifestyle when magical doors start cropping up all over the world in places where you wouldn't expect that lead to new places such as Greece and London and the States are just a few that I've mentioned in here. So it's very magical realist speculative fiction which is definitely a favourite of mine. What I particularly loved about this story is just how real it felt. Every time Nadia and Syed would go through a door to a new country they would find that that new country was struggling with the weight of how many migrants and refugees were coming through to escape the places in the world where bad shit happens and it's not a nice place to live. <laughs> so it was incredibly interesting although it is a love story at its core between Nadia and Syed. They definitely grow as characters, they grow together and then they grow apart, they have different experiences as they go through these doors and this book just touches on so much. It touches on relationship and faith and religion and tradition and home and sex and gender and everything. It was so good. This ripped at my heartstrings. <laughs> it touched me in ways, well that sounded weird, it didn't touch me. Anyway, I loved this. I highly recommend it. It packed such a punch for such a small book. It's such an interesting concept and it was beautifully written. It was very descriptive and I just couldn't help but empathise with these characters and you should go read this one. This one's a great one as well. <laughs> Kings of the Wild, guys. Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. For any fantasy lovers out there, if you haven't tried this yet, I highly, highly recommend it. It feels like traditional fantasy, although it's a lot more modern forward thinking. It's a great old time and it just takes the piss a lot out of your standard fantasy tropes. So if you didn't know what Kings of the Wild is about, we're following a character named Clay Cooper who used to be in a band of mercenaries who are very, very famous. However, he's retired now. He's getting on a bit. He's a little bit past it. He's living a very quiet and somewhat boring life. However, one of the band comes and visits him and says, dude, we need to get back together. We need to go ahead and save my daughter. She's in some trouble. So this is basically just a way to get the band back together and they go and they kick some ass and it's just a great old time. It's like a typical adventure story. You know, there's like little obstacles and unlikely characters along the way until they need to go and get, do their mission and, you know, save the girl. However, this takes the piss so much out of so many tropes and every single magical creature from mythology and monster and fairy tales makes it into the story. If they're not a character, they're somewhat mentioned and this is another one that I just cannot wait to continue with. The humour in this. I was audibly chuckling a lot throughout this book and yes, maybe the humour in some parts is a little bit juvenile, but I really, really, really enjoyed myself reading this book. It was just a whale of a time. I pretty much read this in like one day and it's a good 500 page book. I just couldn't put it down. It just put an instant smile on my face. And like I said, I cannot wait to continue. This is such a great book. I also completely appreciated the fact that we have some diversity in here and it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel like they're just ticking off a checkbox. You know what I mean? So we have a character in here who's black. We have a character in here who is gay. And it's just really, really nice to see in fantasy. You know, fantasy that's written now, you know, it's not just gonna be all white characters who all speak with a posh British accent, you know? So this was just, oh guys, if you haven't read this yet, do it, honestly, thank me later. <laughs> so before I go ahead and talk about more fantasy, because obviously there's gonna be a lot of fantasy on this list, let's talk about a contemporary, which isn't my usual favorite genre. However, Radio Silence by Alice Oseman is so bloody good. In this book, we're following Frances, who is a very academic and hardworking student, who's trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life and what she wants to do at university. However, she has a kind of secret side to her when she's obsessed with a YouTube podcast and she creates fan art for it. And it's very, very well done, so much so that the creator of this podcast asks her to create the fan art officially for the YouTube channel and the, co and the podcast. However, she figures out who he is and then there's that kind of whole controversy of do I tell him that I know who he is or do I not? But primarily this book is about a friendship between these two characters and it is so good. I feel like a lot of contemporaries are usually romance. This is just full on friendship goals 
and I just loved the amount of loyalty they had in this and the discussion on your future and what to do with your life. Should you go ahead and go down the route that's going to get you the most money or should you go and do the thing that's going to make you happy and something you're passionate about and I love this book so much because I related so hard. I had a year between school and university because I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. I still don't know what the hell I want to do all these years later. So this was just so fucking good guys, honestly. If you want a contemporary and you're not keen on romance, check this out. It also had great representation for LGBTQI+. Alice Oseman does that with her books. This has a character who's demisexual, which was nice to see, and I feel like the representation was done very, very well. This has it all. It will make you smile, it will make you laugh, it will make you cry. It's incredibly heartwarming and you'll probably relate quite hard if you're a millennial like me. <laughs> Going back into some fantasy now, I finally read Robin Hobb this year, well last year, and I am sold. I am now a Robin Hobb fan. I've only read the Farsia trilogy but this whole series was like a five star. The first one is Assassin's Apprentice. Let's talk about it. This is very much a traditional fantasy kind of story. We're following Fitz, who's the bastard born son of a prince and he's taken in by the royal family, but he's kind of disregarded because obviously he's a bastard. He has no claim to the throne, if you will. So the king decides what he's gonna do with him is he's gonna train him up to become his personal assassin. So it's just about Fitz learning how to literally kill people and learn how to use poisons. But also there of course is magic in this world. Fitz is quite rare in the fact that he can use two different types of magical abilities. The first one is known as the sight and it's a way of telepathically communicating with other people and kind of almost teleporting your consciousness across vast distances. He can use this because he is part of the Farsia line, the royal line, he is half that kind of blood, so he's able to use that naturally. However, he also can use something called the wit, which is a lower kind of magic. It's traditionally looked down upon because the wit means that you can communicate with animals and beasts. However, if you indulge in this too much and you bond with a certain animal, you may very well turn into a beast yourself and start taking on them kind of characteristics. So this was a lot of fun. He's learning how to use the sight. He's also using the wit when he really shouldn't be and bonding with these animals. And the communication that he has with these animals, the conversations were my favorite part of this book. The animals that he bonds to, especially the dogs in the series and the wolf, I just bloody loved this. This is so complex but so very well done. It did take me a good hundred pages to get into this series but now that I'm in it I just want to read all of Robin Hobb's work. The world building, the characters, the magic system, it's all incredible. I particularly love that we have so much character development with Fitz throughout the series. He starts off as a young boy, at the end of the series he's getting on a little bit and we have some amazing side characters and every side character plays a good role. They're all interesting and they're not forgettable so I appreciate that and yeah I'm here for Robin Hobb. If you haven't tried her writing yet start with Assassin's Apprentice see how you got on with it but if you're anything like me I think you'll bloody love it. <laughs> Next we have The Poppy World by R.F. Kwan. This is a Asian inspired fantasy story. It's a series and I can't wait for the next one. And this story we're following Rin who's an orphan at the beginning of this book. She is studying very hard to do this exam so she can win a spot in a military academy. She desperately wants to get into this academy so she can avoid an arranged marriage that her guardians have arranged for her. However, once she gets there, she realises that she's not all that liked by her fellow students because she's from a poor province. However, she does go ahead and learn magic, doesn't she? Which is my favourite trope from one of the teachers at this school. This magic is very cool. It's almost like stealing or taking, borrowing even, power from a god and there's different gods for different things. So an incredibly interesting backstory and history in this book. We get to see Rin grow as a person throughout the story. However, of course, there's an impending war and Rin realizes that she may have to use these magical abilities that she's been training to use to save her land and her people. This book has triggers for everything guys, especially violence and sexual abuse. This does not shy away from the harsh realities of war, obviously it's inspired by actual historical events and it was done so very well. It was quite hard to read in parts but it is one hell of a chunky book and I found that I just flew through it. Rin is a very interesting character, she's a little bit morally grey and this is such an interesting idea of using or well, borrowing powers from gods and maybe trying not to anger them. The ending of this book had me shook and you cannot help but empathise with Rin and her friends throughout this story. 
I just was absolutely floored by how amazing this book is and you should read it. I loved it. And another amazing fantasy series, you guys, is Red Sister by Mac Lawrence. This story is about magical, badass fighting nuns. What more could you want? In this story, we're following the character of Nonna Grey, who at eight years old is accused of a crime and is about to be hung for it, only for a nun to go and save her and whisk her away to the convent of Sweet Mercy to train how to kill people and learn magic, of course. So not only do we have this school convent setting where these young girls are learning how to kill people, learning how to use poisons and learning how to use these different types of magic you can have depending on your bloodline, we also have a very cool setting. As in this world, they're basically on the brink of destruction as their sun is dying and their planet is being covered with ice. So everyone kind of lives in kind of like the middle, the equator of the earth. Well, it's not the earth, but you know what I mean. And it's such a cool idea. It's almost like a dystopian fantasy story. My favorite part of the series is Nonna as a character. She's very complex. She's a sweetheart at heart, but she has this kind of like badass exterior and she definitely has a lot of character growth throughout this story. I also really, really enjoy the humor and the friendships. And we do have some kind of flash forwards in parts of this book that lead to a larger plot. So we get to see a snippet of what's going down in the future as, like I said, the planet's on the brink of destruction from all this ice. What are they gonna do about it? It's just a great time. I also have read Grey Sister, and I gave this a five star as well, of course. This series is just getting better with every book, and the next book, you guys, is out in April. So if you didn't already plan on reading this story, just know that the next one's out in April, so like you can binge read it all, pretty much. Honestly, if you're a fantasy lover, if there's like one book from this whole video, I would recommend it is Red Sister by Matt Lawrence. Next we have a book that I fell head over heels for and that's The Wicked King by Kay Ancrum. This is a YA contemporary with a heavy fantastical element which is just my favourite thing. It's a story about a friendship between two guys, Jack and August, and it's all told from August's perspective as Jack starts to have hallucinations and can see another world layered on top of our own. It also has a very interesting format as we go through the book and as Jack's delusions get worse. We start off with white pages and then it goes to grey as it's getting worse and then at the end it's black. We also have some images in here and it's told in very short, chap like choppy chapters almost. This story was incredibly fast paced and it pulled up my heartstrings. I loved the relationship between Jack and August. Obviously we have some LGBT themes in here as well and some good rep for mental illness too, um, but it's just so touching. I will say if you're not a fan of kind of magical realist fantasy in your contemporary, this isn't for you. But if you like me and you like odd stories, you're probably gonna love it. It was harrowing to be in August's head as Jack is going through these delusions and August doesn't know what to do for his best friend, how is he gonna help him? And also Jack thinks that he has some kind of prophecy to fulfill in this crazy, dark, twisted world. It's very, very interesting. I found this to be so engrossing and beautifully told. It is short and quick, but it just, the emotional impact this book had on me at the end. I don't know why I fell in love with this so much, I just did, and I feel like this is definitely a Marmite kind of book. You're either gonna really get on with it or you're not really gonna get it. Um, but if it sounds like your kind of thing, it made my top books. I truly, truly enjoyed this story. Next we have Norwegian Wood by Murakami. I just, I loved this. I really, really did. I don't know why I loved it so much, but it's just, oh, I actually listened to the audiobook of this one though. So take this with a grain of salt. I definitely need to read it in physical copy just to definitely say that it's like, definitely a top book of 2018, but I'm pretty sure it still would be. In this book, our main character is a guy named Toru who's reflecting back on his college years as when he was at college, he lost his best friend to suicide and then proceeded to fall in love with his best friend's then girlfriend, Naoko. I think that's how you pronounce it. And she has her own mental health struggles, which is very, very interesting. And it's basically just their tragic love story and everything that comes with it. And I can't quite describe the plot of this book because it's very weird and wonderful and it goes off on little tangents, but primarily it is that tragic love story at its core. This very much felt like a coming of age novel and it was very nostalgic at times. What I particularly loved about this was the writing. Like I said, I listened to it on audiobook. So when I heard it, it was just like sheer poetry. And some of the quotes and lines in here, I just, I want them tattooed on my face. Maybe not, that's a bit much. But I just really, really fell in love with this. 
I also loved how tangible and flawed the characters in this story are and also the very cool female characters in this. We have one named Midori and she's like my favourite, like absolute favourite female character that I read in 2018. She's so ballsy and I love her and this just had all that emotional impact on me. When I finished it, it was kind of heartbreaking and I went into a little bit of a book coma afterwards. But wow, I'm definitely going to try and reread this in 2019. Let me know your thoughts if you've read it. Do you love it as much as I do? I just, like I said, I can't quite put my finger on why. I just connected with it and I highly recommend you try it. And lastly, you guys, I know I said that I didn't put any of these in any particular order, but I do have a top number one spot. To Kill a Mockingbird by Happily. This book is very well known and very well loved for very good reasons and it was a Pulitzer Prize winner. It also has a movie. I haven't seen the movie. Should I watch the movie? Anyway, this book, wow. <sighs> We're following the perspective of a young girl named Scout whose father is appointed as the defense attorney for a black man who has been accused of raping a white woman at this time. So obviously that leads to a lot of prejudice against Scout and her family, especially her father in this small town. And it was just so emotionally impactful. Seeing all this through the eyes of a child was very harrowing, but also kind of eye-opening. The fact that she has to kind of come to terms with what's happening to her family, the prejudice and the fact that racism is a thing. The impending court case was incredibly interesting and the writing in this was beautiful. The setting, the harder topics, the themes, the way that it was handled. I just loved everything about this book. I loved how boisterous and strong-willed Scout as a character is and her relationship with her brother and her father. Atticus has to be one of the best father figures I've ever read about in a book and I adore him and this book is everything and it took me a very long time to read it. I wish I'd read it sooner, I wish I'd read it in school, apparently it wasn't on my curriculum but I'm so glad I've remedied that and read it finally. This will probably be a favourite book of all time. Like, hands down, this is one of the best books I've read in my whole damn life. And if you haven't read it yet, do it. <laughs> it's so good. So those are my top books of 2018. However, I do still have a lot more that I would like to recommend you. So I'm just going to hold up a bunch of books that I also suggest you give a try. <laughs> Here we go. First one, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. The Long Walk by Richard Bachman, aka Stephen King. The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, the beginning of the Stormlight Archives. A Man Called Uwe by Frederick Bachman. The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, although I will say there is some fat phobic language in here, which is a bloody shame. The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon. Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. God's Grave by Jay Kristoff, the sequel to Nevernight. A Little Life by Hani Yanagara. Technically, I've not finished this, I have like the last 30 pages or so because I can't do it because oh, I'm still emotionally traumatised. But nevertheless, A Little Life by Hany Anagara. <laughs> the Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. The Humans by Matt Haig. I Was Born for This by Alice Oseman. And finally, Night Film by Marisha Pessel. So you guys, those are all my favourite books of the year. Do let me know if you've read any of these and your thoughts on them. Did they make your top list of 2018 as well? Do let me know if they did. Also let me know if I've maybe convinced you to try one or two one of these because that's the real aim here. I just want everyone to read these books because then you can come back and talk to me about them which is like the best part of booktube, am I right? So I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Please like and subscribe if you care to do so and I will catch you in my next one. Bye!